God can put something on your life that will change the world. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how wise you think you are, how dumb, how dumb you feel you are. I just care that you can believe this. this world in their generation have become wiser than the children of light and why we need to bring that conversation however hard it is somebody needed to start it because for those of us who are mature and have been in the gospel for quite some time it goes without mention that certain things are breaking before us and yet we know and see that God is building something so amidst the challenges that are hitting the church, I'm glad to tell you that we see and understand that God is also doing something. For when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts a standard. And if that standard has to be given, then the narrative has to change. The, the, the conversations have to change. We must start discussing more mature texts. It's okay to encourage you in the Lord and that we have done every Sunday and we continue to do until Jesus returns. But sometimes we're going to be propelled to provoke you and challenge you to begin to believe God bigger than you have been believing him to get you out of your comfort zones. And God is going to require you to start running miles a bit more extra in understanding and in prayer, in study. But whatever it takes, I believe that the church that is going to see the return of Jesus Christ is going to be a church, the Bible has said, without spot nor wrinkle. And we believe that without spot nor wrinkle does not necessarily mean that they're going to be perfect men in the flesh, necessarily, but that they're going to be so cleaned or cleansed by the word of God. For Jesus says, by your word I have cleansed them. They're going to be so perfected in the revelation of the person of God that everything will work to their consecration. I believe that the return of Jesus Christ is going to see the most glorious church human history has ever seen. And if it has to be so, then we have to start to have certain conversations. You see, that's exactly what is happening in Luke, 9, in Luke 16. Jesus makes an observation and says, the problem is, or with challenges, that we see that the people of this world are becoming wiser in their generation. Not just wiser, but he added in their generation than the children of light. Now the key words there are two, generation and wise okay generation means genes human beings are a, comp a composition of genes and God is telling us that they are their genes are adopting and inventing and innovating bringing ideas and concepts in the world faster than the church is giving that's what they're telling us because we have a gene in us a God gene to be exact you see, you see what I'm saying but what God is supposed to be doing by us is supposed to be bigger than what God is doing by them. But again, you don't underestimate the latent power of a human soul, even without God. Those of us who have read the story in Genesis 11, you've heard of a time when Nimrod and his cohorts make up their mind to build up a, 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 a tower, they said. That they want to build a tower to go to heaven. Okay? And if you read the ancient uh, scripts, it, actually the narrative is that Nimrod and his team wanted to build a building that will go up to heaven so they could conquer God. As laughable as that is, God said, these people being one language and one speech, nothing they imagine to do shall be impossible with them. Meaning that they're not born again, they're not tongue speaking, they're not spirit, uh, I mean, they're not, they're, 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 they're not splitting mysteries and demystifying things, but they, they, because they have a certain language and it is reconciled with certain dimensions, they can actually do it without God's blessing. They can do it. Some of you underestimate what a human being is able to do simply because they were created in the image of God. You see what I'm saying? 
And now even better for us who believe God has given a more excellent experience because we are a new creation for a very man being Christ. They are a new one creature and behold the old is past and now all things are become what new and all things are of God which has reconciled us unto himself for it was God in Christ before the creation of the world reconciling the world to himself not imputing sin but imputing righteousness and he says and now we beseech you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to him what is the work of the New Testament church the ministry of reconciliation that thing that must make you one with God so one with God that everything God is and has is working in you and I tell you the truth the reason why we're not able to embrace it is we fear its consequences do you know what it's like to be all God is and have all that he has Remember you, his offspring. In him you live, move, and have your own being. You're not just a human being. You have a certain being found in him. Somebody shout hallelujah. And when he sees that glory, he says, you can only be the head and not the tail. You can only be above and not below. You can only go upward and forward. You cannot go backward. For we are not of them that draw back to perdition. But of them that believe to the serving of the soul. Paul says, nay, in all things we are more than conquerors. He says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. And he makes manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We are given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue you start to see everything meeting together and sometimes the question is what would a true Christian look like what would we truly look like and I'm telling us that the sons of this world the children of this world in the inferiority of their nature they have explored and transversed many realms and touched many possibilities and potentials in the little thing they were given in the inferior nature that they carry and I begin with a story that we have all read in the time of Jesus when he's born the Bible tells us there were some men they're called wise the word here is wise wise men but not, not many of you ask yourselves why were they called wise were they wise because they brought gifts to Jesus? Does anybody who bring gifts to Jesus become automatically wise because they brought gifts to Jesus? No. Why are they wise? Because there is a wisdom in them that can look at a star and say, this kind of star signifies the birth of a certain fellow. And if we look at the shape of this star and the illumination, it's of a king. And this kind of print actually is of a Jewish king. And then they come looking, where is he that is born the king of the Jews? Are you following? Now, you might take that lightly, but if you will think with me for a moment, how would a guy figure out, just by looking at a star, he can tell details of who is born, they can even locate him. without a GPS. Are you following what I'm saying? So, the people of this world, they're becoming wiser in the sciences, in the arts, in, in, in whatever field of study. Their genes are growing and humanity is inventing and innovating things that are beyond, uh, you know, the word is ineffable. They're too great to be expressed. You see what I'm saying? But where is the church? Are we growing and advancing to really have an answer above these boys? Or they are giving us solutions and we're quiet? That's a question. Are they wiser? Do they have more solutions than we have in the church? That's a question we must ask ourselves and see whether we have answers. We cannot continue ignoring it because they are serious. So we've got to become serious about this God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jonah. 
A ship is in the middle of an ocean and the waves are tossing to and fro. And these guys, the Bible says, every man cried to his God. And it was revealed to them that there must be somebody on the boat who has disobeyed his God. They knew it. It was not a normal flood. And the scriptures tell us, they started asking who, 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 and then they cast lots. And when they cast lots, the lost cast, so, the lost, the lots fall on who? Jonah. So how did they know what to do in that instance? How did they tell the difference between a normal flood and a flood seeking to avenge a man for his rebellion toward his God? And how did the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still honor them and direct the Lord to fall on Jonah? We don't know everything. We don't know everything. You read the story of, 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 um, of, of uh, Samson. And the scriptures tell you this big amphitheater sitting thousands and thousands of people is built on only two pillars. And if you can shut them, that whole building will come down. And somebody had that wisdom somewhere in the world. So there's many things, and some of them we read in scripture, they, they, they don't even have a relationship with that God you believe, but they have a way, they find their way. And so, in Matthew 16, a story is given where Jesus tells the Pharisees that you look at the weather in the morning, and I mean the evening, and it's red, and you know it's going to be a fine weather. It's a, pie, uh, uh, it's a good weather. And then you look at it red in the morning and you know it's going to be a bad weather day. And he says, but you guys can read the signs of the sky, but you know not the sign of the times. You don't know the signs of the times. The things God is releasing in the world and you have no clue about it, yet you can read the signs of the sky. And when you read ancient scripts like the book of Enoch, actually the book of Enoch gives a full account. I read it. It gives a full account of what Jesus meant. You might not understand it until you read the book of Enoch. But this is what happened. In the days of Noah, before the flood, why God destroyed the world, fallen angelics came and started to teach the children of men wisdoms that were forbidden. They're called forbidden wisdoms. They taught them many things, one of which, for example, is the making of weapons. Human beings never knew how to create things that would kill others. You see what I'm saying? And scripture is clear that these angels were then later held in what? In everlasting chains. That's what you read later in Peter, the angels that were held in everlasting chains. These are the guys. Because he knew they had to be restrained or else they were going to teach humanity more than they were supposed to know. One of the teachings that they were taught was making mirrors. And somebody would ask, how? What's the, what's the problem with the mirror? And I'm not saying don't look at yourself in the mirror, but I'm only saying that the interpretation behind why these angels did it, they were trying to make man look at himself and understand who they are and kill their vision of God and the true mirror. You understand what I'm saying? Do you know how many people walk in the mirror and they don't like what they see? How many commit suicide because they saw something different in the mirror? How many want to change their lives and their faces because they've seen something they don't love in the mirror? But who is defining them? This thing is just giving them a reflection of who they are outside. They cannot see that they're fearfully and wonderfully made. That they are perfect in the eyes of God. And that it's not what you see with your physical eyes, but what God has put in you. That treasure in nothing vessels. That the excellence of power might be of God. And the Bible tells us that, and as we behold, it, like in the mirror, Corinthians says, the glory of God. Because the true mirror God has given man to see was the image of God because you were created in the image of God and as you continue looking at God you were changed into him you see but now the consciousness of the self was the problem the angelics needed to teach them to learn to be conscious of themselves that's why snapchat is selling 
because you want to look you're taking selfies every time even in the most interesting angles in fact <laughs> you understand what I'm saying we're so conscious we're so conscious about who we are but you know why because many of us are losing the image of what God has created and ladies and gentlemen that has got to change nothing outside the word of God should define you I say nothing outside the word of God should define you somebody shout hallelujah and then they taught incantations how to cast spells and how to undo spells but I'm telling people these spirits, Nephilim spirits in the world are still carrying that conversation. How are men making nerve agents? How are they making atomic bombs? Nuclear warhead, how are they making that? How does a guy sit down and create something that can kill 20 million people in 15 minutes? How, how does a guy even build that? And he was born by a woman. That's not science. And the many other things in the world that the devil has, has built through these men, one time I was reading the works of Socrates and in one work Socrates gives the recognition of the devil that taught him wisdom. But how many people in the world are quoting Socrates and his philosophies? And the Bible warns us about the philosophies and the endless genealogies that minister questions to the hearts of our hearers rather than godly edification which is after faith. These things inflate us, inflate us sorry, because they, they, they appear to have a wisdom of the world, but they are void of the wisdom of God. Let me tell you what the wisdom of God is. By the Bible, the wisdom of God is the power of God. You can only define wisdom when you are able to demonstrate power. Speak all you want, but your speaking can't get cancer out of that woman. You must have enough wisdom in God to know how cancer leaves that body. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I tell you what, that is what the church needs. If you're talking about preaching, we have preached. I mean, we have preached every kind of thing. But when you see yourself losing your child, and that day you have to go back in the Bible and say, but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is my God, and I need to fix this boy early. Now you're speaking the language I want to hear. It says that one time when your boy is fixed, your friends will take you out for tea and tell you, Vanessa, how did you do that? And then you'll first even make it, speak a tongue for three seconds, Mara Tubadi Gashota. Then you say, let's open our Bibles. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah, glory to God. It says that our children can get sleep without taking sleep tablets. Somebody shout hallelujah. They can get peace and not need depression medicines because there is a God bigger. Somebody shout hallelujah. That can give you a joy unspeakable that is full of glory. And it goes back as the church advances in the wisdom of God. Because it means we start to give answers and not questions. Somebody shout hallelujah. And not questions. And not questions. A lady brought her mother some time ago and they told us that she had breast cancer and they told her, the doctors had told her the chances are gone. There is no chances here. It's spread. And this woman walked in and I just felt this boldness to tell her. That's the doctors. And they, they've done their best. And I told her that's not God's opinion. And guess what? The woman believed me. The woman believed me. And God started to reverse it every day. And I remember the day was about three months later. She came and just hugged me. Boom! And I said, this woman, I didn't even remember her well. And there was no cancer in her body. No cancer in her body. What? God had reversed every symptom. That's why the Bible says, when it talks about Jesus, it says, it calls him Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Christ is the wisdom and the power of God. Where the wisdom of God is, the power of God is. Somebody shout hallelujah. We've seen things, guys are doing so much and like I said, even the best inventions and innovations in the world have a spiritual interpretation. And some of it is from darkness and some of it is 
from God and many of us don't tell the difference we're just taking these things swallowing them you know indulging in them we, we've received their meditations and how they meditate and they empty their brains when they're supposed to fill them with the word we've taken in everything and the wisdom of this world has entered the church this is the problem with Jesus and the Pharisees he's telling them it because in one of the angelic teachings these fallen angels taught the sons of of men astrology how to speak into men's destinies with stars and your horoscope some of you you even bust about it says hey don't don't mess with me I'm a Leo whatever that means <laughs> instead of saying I'm a child of God you say I'm a Leo you understand I'm a Sagittarius and you know what but you know what one time I I was curious back in those years and I said let me just read these things and understand what they mean and man these things are accurate in many ways but they're not true so if you've not yet known the truth, you can be consumed by them. Are you following what I'm saying? Our destinies are not spoken by an astrologer, a tarot card reader. No! Our destinies are clear in scripture. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, for I know the plans that I have towards you. Plans to make you prosper, not to harm you. To give you peace, peace sorry. To give you an expected end. I don't need a glass for somebody to sit through a glass to tell my destinies. So we see that, okay, well, have people stopped making weaponry? They're making weaponry. And there's more weapons coming out every year. That means these spirits are still teaching some of the medicines that people swallow in the world. Can I shock you? Did you know that the word pharmacare, your English word pharmacy, the root word from pharmacy is sorcery. Study it, it's witchcraft. So I'm not saying I'm against everything coming out of our pharmacies, but I'm also not ashamed to tell you the truth that not everything we swallow is inspired by God through those who made it. Are you following what I'm saying? So that is why I'm, I'm not opposed to drugs. So you can swallow your drugs and prescriptions. That's all right. But I'm saying you should know when you have to put your hand on your body and say, uh -uh, this one no man can fix. And speak in tongues until your body heals. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at you. You survived COVID and it killed other people. How did you survive COVID? Did it have a cure? No. But you believed in the God, the author and finisher of your faith. And you said, I refuse to die. You put your hands over your head and God fixed you. And those other things too, I believe the wisdom of God will fix. We refuse to die. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, what am I provoking you to do before we finish? You can get to your feet now. I'm about to finish. Stand with me for the last few seconds. I'm provoking us to ask for the wisdom that our genes are supposed to build. I'm provoking us to tell God we are, f we are tired of being predictable and living mediocre. We want to walk in a wisdom where with the scientists of this world will come to us and ask us questions. The engineers of this world will come to us and ask us questions. That we will have secrets that they're not able to have. And by that, use that opportunity to tell them that there's a God above. There's a God above. There's a God above. Some of you, if you go on YouTube, you're going to find a testimony of a lady who went to a doctor. She had a little daughter, and this girl was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Is it curable? Is cerebral palsy cur curable? It's not. I mean, scientifically, it's not. Bell syndrome and something heart disease. The, the, the girl had heart disease, Bell's palsy, and Down syndrome. And the doctors told this woman, Your daughter will never talk, your daughter will never walk, she will never hear like any other normal child, she will never function. You're going to raise a cabbage. 
And while she goes to Nairobi, the next country, to take her child for treatment, she finds somebody in the bus and they tell her, look for a man called Apostle Grace and he lays hands on your daughter. I have a video, you'll go on YouTube and check it out. And on one of those days I'm preaching and after service this lady comes and gives me her child. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, just hug this child and pray. And I prayed for this child. And after two weeks of that prayer, I don't know, this kid was what, three or something else? She had not walked. Two weeks of that prayer, the woman is outside doing her own chores and she just sees her daughter walking out of the house. And the girl began to talk immediately. And she began to run. And she did everything a doctor said she would never do. She took the child back to hospital. I think the child had holes in the heart. Two holes or something. Or something like that. The heart was perfectly healed. They told her, your child does not have cerebral palsy anymore. No Bell syndrome. We cannot believe that this is the same child we were treating. And I realized that there is a wisdom in God that is bigger than science and biology. Somebody shout hallelujah. Imagine if that entered your boy who is doing engineering in university. Imagine if that entered that your daughter who is, who is doing medicine. Imagine that entered your boy who is doing architecture, who is doing mathematics in university. And our children are able to do things that the scientists of this world are not able to do. To invent things that the men of this world have no clue about. Do you know that that is the beginning of changing the world? And that is what I'm trying to tell you. That God can put something on your life that will change the world. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how wise you think you are how now, how dumb you feel you are. I just care that you can believe this. I just care that you can believe this. Now you're going to raise your hands in heaven. Do you know what you're going to be doing? You're going to say, God, I surrender say these words father in the name of Jesus your word has entered my spirit and I feel it that I'm ready to do what you've ordained me to do say I receive the wisdom that you have given me in Christ and I believe before I leave this world I'm gonna change it I am marked to change the world and I'm ready to change the world receive it in Jesus name receive it in Jesus name receive it in Jesus name power of the Holy Ghost Mata Baradego the Prince of God is here receive it receive it receive it Give the Lord a mighty, 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 mighty unclap of praise.